Alright, I have built a battery backup box for my CPAP. It's a lithium ion uh, battery, which is inside this nifty little uh, ammo case from Harbor Freight. And it puts out a regulated 12 volts. So with my on-off switch, I can power it up. And I can turn on my CPAP. So this CPAP currently is set to have uh, the heated hose, the humidity, and full pressure. And this this little battery, it's not that little, it's pretty heavy, uh, totally can can run this. It it might have enough power. It might it might have enough power to actually run it for eight hours. But if you reconfigure your CPAP, where you uh, take the, the humidifier off, plug directly into the, the back of the, the CPAP, where you have no heat on the hose and no humidity, uh, I think this thing could run it for like a week or more. And it's kind of heavy. I mean, you could carry it if you're backpacking, but you know, car camping, or power outages. There's a lot of potential here for uh, keeping, you know, your nights healthy and keeping uh, devices going. Uh, I mean, New Orleans right now out of power. Uh, last winter here in Texas, where I live, we had we had a lot of rolling blackouts. I mean, you couldn't rely on uh, on constant power for your CPAP. All right. So a closer look. So I have the. Uh, you know the cigarette lighter 12 volt you know port here this is something that I bought from the local auto parts store and then I have this uh, I think a 20 amp uh, switch which is another thing from the auto parts store and then coming to the inside we have our butt converter this butt converter converter though it uh, we, when I was running my CPAP with the humidity and with the uh, the the heated hose this got hot within half an hour i mean it wasn't like gonna melt down hot or i don't think it was hot enough to destroy itself but it was noticeably warm so <laughs> if you're trying to to run a butt converter with the uh uh the heat and the humidity even though this says it's rated for 15 amp max and 10 amp continuous and the cpap says it uses 6.67 .6 amps uh, being sealed up in here is probably not a good idea. Uh, probably, you know, really, you probably just shouldn't try to run the humidity on on a, a small battery backup to begin with. But just running the CPAP itself with no heat or humidity, this thing didn't change temperature at all. They handled it perfectly. Let's uh, dissect this a little bit more. We also have right here. We have a a fuse. Yeah, I just got a little 10 amp fuse right there. We have the, the two battery packs. So, so each one of these packs I made is individually made up of a whole bunch of other packs. <laughs> so, so I got on battery hookup and I bought these uh, 16 and a half volt, six and a half amp hour, you know, battery packs. And I bought eight of them. And it was like $65 before shipping. Plus I added some uh, of these little XT60 connectors, these yellow things. Uh, and and so you know it was eighty eighty four dollars to get to get eight packs into my house that I then turned into you know two larger packs. I have used this thing for two nights with only uh, CPAP, no heat or humidity, and I've used it for half an hour uh, running everything, and then it has set for weeks. So let's just check check the voltage. So we're at 15.4 volts. It's been sitting for weeks. These are used batteries off of an internet store. So that's pretty promising. I only charged it up to maybe 16.2 volts. And I got two nights plus some screwing around uh, heavy loads. You know, a little, little load test on it. So I'm, I'm, I think we have more than enough uh, to uh, to last over a week on CPAP only, and and if I had uh, I don't know if I'd fully charged it, 
you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, I haven't tested it that far, maybe we could push two weeks of battery backup for the CPAP only. So that's pretty promising. So another component in here is this is a parallel wire that I made. It, uh, it, it basically just brings the two batteries together as one, put them in parallel, and then the individual packs I packaged them up like this. You can see there's there's you know four packs inside each one of these, and I wrote all of the specifications on it. So yeah, I'm real happy with this, and and I'll I'll show you I'll show exactly how I made it. Uh, this video might get long because of that, but the most important thing I think is everywhere I read on the internet, they all said that you really needed to regulate the voltage. That that the uh, the Philips Respironics Dream Station that I use uh, can't handle, you know, the the 16 and a half peak voltage if this is fully charged. So this this uh, you know DC to DC you know buck converter lets you finally regulate the voltage down to you know it could be exactly 12 volts, 12.1, you know, just whatever you you feel like. But the uh, the discharge voltage of this is 11.2 volts, right? of these packs. That's when the, the BMS inside each one of the individual uh, you know, packs will, will protect the battery and turn itself off. This thing being set to 12 volts, I've read comments, I haven't tested it myself, but when, this, when the battery voltage gets down to below what you have this set at, these will turn off. And so that'll be a, a uh, better level of, of battery protection than letting the BS, BMSs protect it. So in theory, we could just use this thing until it quits working and then charge it up and we, uh, we uh, won't damage the batteries and it'll be good to go. So over here, I have a, uh, a, uh, uh, you know, a charge controller. This, this is kind of a cheap one off Amazon. It is uh, rated up to 30 volts and 10 amps. So when you charge lithium ions, you want to have a constant voltage and constant uh, current. So you're going to set the voltage I'm going to go to, uh, yeah, 16.2 is fine. And then the amperage, uh, these two packs, I mean, we're talking, I could do, I think, 24 amp charge if I want. But just to keep this from getting too hot, I'm going to take the amps down to 6 or something. So I'm going to charge this at 6 amps, continuous, and, and that will slowly climb the voltage up. And then the voltage, once it reaches 16.2, we make sure that we're still set at 16.2. It'll just hold a steady, a steady voltage until, until you know it's it's done. And and then then once you know it's gonna it's gonna, so basically it holds 16 amps until it reaches the desired voltage. Then it holds the desired voltage, and then you see the amps start to fall off. Then once you're down to like a few hundred milliamps or whatever, you can just consider it charged. Okay, so real quick, when you're uh, shopping around for batteries, the two main websites that I'm familiar with are Battery Hookup and JAG35. Um, JAG35 is is this uh, uh, Hey Who Garcia guy who has this, you know, I mean, if you're looking into batteries, you should be familiar with his channel because he is huge in the uh, lithium-ion battery space. I mean, he just, I mean, look at this. He'll teach you everything you want to know about anything. I haven't bought from him yet, but maybe on my next project I will. So far, I've only bought from Battery Hookup on two occasions. One from my e-bike and another one from my CPAP backup. Uh, but when you're buying from Battery Hookup, here's an important little little thing here. Say 5% when you use code DIY at checkout. Um, they, they have this affiliate program, you know, so like like the uh, the creator that says sends business this way, they get 10%. Uh, I, I don't have that set up and I don't know if I'm going to, but, uh, anyways, you'll say 5% whether you use a creator's code or the DIY code, uh, that, that's comes with the hookup. But anyways, shopping for batteries. So these two websites that I mentioned, they have just tons of used batteries, uh, new old stock batteries, you know, things that they got built and then never found a product to go into and uh it's always changing so this right here see 
this is what I bought. Uh, these are 14 point four volt nominal 6.6 .6 amp hour uh, lithium ion modules. So the lithium ions, they're the ones that charge up to like 16.5, 16.7 volts or whatever. And what I liked about these is that they were plug and play, right? Uh, they have the, the BMS right in there and they're just, they're good to go. But there's other options, other chemistries you might want to look into, such as lithium iron phosphate. So whereas um, those lithium ion batteries have a higher, I guess, power density, they don't cycle as many times, right? So uh, they might, you know, the way I'm charging them at like 16.1, 16.2 volts, that's an undercharge. So they, sh you know, maybe they'll last a thousand cycles if I do it that way. I don't know. But these lithium iron phosphate batteries, they are the ones that from the factory will cycle thousands of times. And, uh, and their voltage is a little bit different. So their nominal voltage is 12.8, which is comparable to, uh, to a, a, a regular a lead acid battery, more or less. And uh, they're, they only charge up to 14.6 volts. So, I mean, if it's fully charged at 14.6, maybe, uh, maybe you'd still need a, a, you know, a buck converter for the power regulation, but, but you know, whatever. So, so this battery testing, you know, really good is $110, but you could go for, you know, a, a less, a less well testing battery and save quite a bit of money. Uh, you know, one or two of these, you know, uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, what is that? Thirty-two amp hours. That that could be that could be an, a week of uh, of uh, cell phone charging and CPAP backup in case the the power goes out. Uh, but you know, just whatever battery you choose to buy, you know, look around, check out both the websites, see if any of these deals just like scream at you. That's what you want to mess with. And if you're more adventurous, you can. You know, build your own pack from the scratch up, uh, scratch, whatever. And and if you're less, you can buy something like I did that is, uh, you know, totally ready to go, plug and play. Where you know, I just put all mine in in a in a, 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 a parallel, right? So, anyways, now let's get to the build aspect of this. So these just came in from uh, battery hookup. What I want to do is I just want to charge them up. And then I want to see if uh, if they will, you know, hold that charge sitting there. And then if they all hold it, I'll use them all. And if not, I'll uh, I'll just use some of them, or maybe buy another one. This particular battery, I popped the top off of it just to sort of look at how it was constructed. And uh, I I think it's built well. I mean, it's a medical pack, and they charge like 150 bucks for these. So you can see there's an isolator ring for where they uh, they uh, they go from the that's the positive to the negative. That has all this self adhesive sticky stuff in there, and the uh, the uh, the BMS, you know, it's it's small. Uh, battery hookup says three amps. I tried to look this up, and the only thing I could really find is is on the back side of of the BMS. There's some writing. And when you look that up, it shows some sort of like a, a vacuum uh, medical device, I guess for like edema in the legs or something. I don't really know. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. You know, the, the, these are uh, marketed by Better Hookup as turnkey ready BMS. Just use the uh, the positive and the negative to to uh, charge and discharge it, and limit it to three amps per pack. All right, so let's just cut these. And then this one, let's see what gauge they are. Is it a 16? Nope. Is it an 18? Okay, 18 gauge wire. I'm just gonna strip a little bit off of these so I can try charging them up. Okay, so that's all the connectors gone. So I got these ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna set my voltage limit real quick okay so we can set the voltage at 
like that with these disconnected we got the voltage I'm gonna set it to 16 volts for now now let's uh, turn down the amps and then to set the amperage I'm gonna connect it then I'm gonna set the amps to let's start off low let's just start off at three for these four packs there's three amps. Okay. Let me turn that off. So now I'm going to hook up my positives here. I'm going to hook up my negative here. Ooh. Now let's turn this on should be set so we're doing constant current right now just under three amps and the voltage is going up so we're charging so we have our constant current and our constant voltage set that's gonna be pretty sweet uh, and I guess this is just gonna take an eternity so for this first charge, what I've been doing with my batteries is I've been taking it pretty easy to begin with, right? And and, uh, and then what, as the voltage goes up, I'm going to go ahead and and crank up the uh, the amps a little higher. Because in theory, since all these are in parallel, parallel, we have four. It'd be three eight. You know, oh my God, three eight, three six nine twelve, right? And uh, this thing can only put out twelve. I mean, ten amps. So. Uh, we can't overpower <laughs> the uh, the charge amps with uh, with this device and these individual cells they can take a whole lot more charge than that but this is what the BMS will limit so uh, as we watch this charge what we're gonna see is it's going to maintain a constant current the amperage uh, there'll just be a flat line of amperage but the voltage is going to slowly creep up. See, so it's at 12.52, and then 12.53, and then the uh, the voltage curve will start going up. And then once it hits the 16 volts that I set it at, that's going to go flat. And once it goes goes uh, flat on voltage, typically that's you know soon after that is when the uh, the batteries will st stop taking <laughs> so much amperage and the amperage will start trickling down <laughs> I guess we the curve the amperage will start trickling down so so when you charge lithium ions you want a constant voltage and a constant current charge pattern and these power supplies will allow you to do that so we'll check in with this later okay so the voltage has gone up to 14.7 so I'm going to go ahead and just raise the the uh, amperage up now See if we can get a little quicker charge. I'm just go up to six, I guess. Why not? Uh, you just I'm just being careful because it's the first charge of these packs, and I don't know anything about them. They are still ice cold. This is very uh, low charge for for what what these cells can actually handle. But you know, just being cautious. I'm doing it outside in case they decide to go up on me. And uh, yeah. All right, there's a lot of background noise, sorry about that. But we just reached 15 volts, and uh, we're still on the constant current of six amps. I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the amps a bit more so this uh, doesn't take all day. I'm just gonna go to nine. So we're at nine amps, and we have four batteries charging at once. So in theory, we are still safe. Uh, but yeah. Once this reaches 16 volts or whatever I set it at, uh, we're, it's, that light's going to switch to constant voltage, okay? And, uh, and and then the voltage will will stay steady, and the the current, the amps will start to drop. All right, we've been charging for a while now, and uh, I think about two hours, and we've just now reached 16 volts. See that? Now it's, the light has switched to the constant voltage. 
I'll just center that for you so you can really see it. So at 16 volts, we switch to constant voltage. And you can see the amps are starting to go down. So now that we've reached our constant voltage, what's happening to the batteries is now uh, we're seeing some resistance <laughs> to how much current they will accept. So we're already down to uh, below nine amps and that'll continue to go down. So we've been charging two hours, but we are at the long stage of the charge now. Uh, reaching the voltage is the quick part and then the amps trickling down to pretty low. Uh, 100 milliamps or something you know uh that that's that's the long part so uh these batteries are warm to the touch a little above body temperature uh, above the ambient temperature outside because we're in texas and uh but they're not hot they're just warm to the touch i'm gonna show you one thing on my on my e-bike build i used these other cells from uh battery hookup and they have charge instructions so this is also a a 4s 3p battery pack here okay uh except for there's there's two sets of of 4s 3p in in each pack so you can sort of tell that these are you know whatever <laughs> there's two of these and and one of these but uh Charge each 12 volt section independently at 16 and a half volts, constant current or constant voltage, and three amps max. Uh, charge is complete when current drops to 100 milliamps. So we can follow, you know, similar rules to this, except for I'm only going to 16 volt on these batteries. But when that trickles down to, you know, half an amp or something, you know, we can assume that that uh, these these four packs are about fully charged at 16 volts. I mean, you can go up to 16.8, uh, which is a full charge. 16.5, like what this pack recommends, is a slight undercharge. And you know, when you undercharge a lithium ion battery, it's supposed to last a little bit longer. So we're just gonna let it do its thing. Uh, we'll see how long it takes. You know, in theory, the longer it takes to charge, the, the healthier the batteries are, right? So if we're putting in a uh, hundred and 40 watts and each one of these has nearly a hundred uh, watt hour capacity you know you would assume that the total charge cycle if you <laughs> maintain that is you know a few hours right but but to get that last bit in takes takes extra long because they they, they just take less and less uh, current as they get full uh, all right we're right at two hours and 40 minutes in since starting the charge the amperage continues to track down it's holding 16 volts we're down from uh, 9 amps down to 6.34 all right it's been about five hours and 10 minutes the uh, amperage is below one amp I, you know i could go further but uh look how much is going in now you know 15 watts is all that's going into these four packs <laughs> So I'm just going to call it quits here and charge the other pack. Uh, I'm going to turn this off and disconnect it. I'm going to go ahead and take my amperage and just turn that off for now. And we'll do it again to the other pack. Boom, I got that one ready to go. So, we'll do positive, oh, I'll make sure I pinch a bunch of them, positive, we'll come in from the other side with the negative, keep those separated, let's zoom out, I'm going to turn this on, it's showing that they're, these packs have 11.87 volts combined, so let's just turn the amps up a bit. Let's do kind of like we did earlier. Three amps. <laughs> uh, 
But you can tell, it takes, you know, I think that's a good sign. When it takes that long to charge something, that means that it's taken a lot of charge. So these packs seem to be pretty good. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing again for these other four batteries, but you get the idea on how to charge uh, lithium ions now. Constant current, constant voltage, and you, uh, uh, you just stay within the limits, and you can pick how uh, undercharged you want it, or you can fully charge them. All right, so for these first four batteries I charged, I'm just going to leave them connected for a while and uh, let them <laughs> equalize or whatever, charge each other. And, uh, you know, maybe an hour I'll leave it like that. And then I'm going to disconnect them all. And then tomorrow I'm going to check the voltages and see if they're similar. If one is way different than the other, I think that would be a good sign that one of these packs is bad. Just so we have uh, one data point... <laughs> to work with. Uh, there's my my voltmeter. 15.99 volts is what we're starting at. Uh, the dropping slightly which is normal I think. Everyone says that that, that happens. Oops, if I can get a good reading. So I'm going to let them sit like this for an hour, check the voltage, disconnect it, and see what they're doing in the morning because one of these could be bad it could have a parasitic draw it might draw uh, the whole pack down who knows all right let's just check the voltage everything's set for like two days now so this pack is 15.88 15.87 15.89 15 so they're all very close that's a good sign so I'm just gonna assemble them so I've done one already just to sort of try it out you see I uh, I just taped them I just taped four packs together and I ran uh, all the wires from each pack individually into one XT60 connector I'm gonna do you know two two uh, packs like this and then I labeled it real clearly. This pack is four 4S3P modules in parallel, you know, full charge, nominal discharge, uh, amp hours, total amp hours. And even on the top, I labeled, uh, you know, lithium ion charge, constant voltage max 6.8, constant current max. Actually, I first wrote a CA, but I have a CC. You know, 12 amp discharge, 12 amp. So I'll know exactly what this is in the future. So first thing that I need to do, I need to sort of patch this thing back up that I, I tore apart so uh, I'm just gonna start on the bottom here I'm gonna go with some electrical tape I will get it sort of stretched out tight I've been using scissors instead of stretching it apart just so it looks a little more like it's gonna hold together Okay, so these uh, thermistors, I don't really need those. Let me just let me just get a little piece of that. Let's hold it down. Now these positive and negatives, I'm going to do a similar maneuver with those. So I'm going to try not to touch these together, but if they do touch together, uh, the BMS will just shut off. I won't get <laughs> an explosion. And yeah. If I can get this packing tape up. Use the packing tape to hold that down. Not this one here. Just getting the blue wires out of the way, right? So this one's in good shape. This heat shrink has exploded, so I'll do the same same maneuver. I'm just gonna I'm gonna tape all of my wires down flat, and I'm gonna have them coming up in a line like I have here. So on that last pack, I just used a whole bunch of tape to hold things together. All right, so I'm gonna start with. Sticking two together. Mm. 
Okay, whatever. <laughs> There's a little bit of tape. Now, let's go for some... I don't know, probably paper tape isn't a good idea with something that could catch fire. But I'm going to wrap it in uh, boxing tape, so that will help. Okay, whatever. You get the idea. There's some tape. This thing is loosely together now. <laughs> now we can get serious. Alright, so I'm going to build these two packs as mirror images of each other. Just because there's so little space inside the box, I have a plan for how to fit everything in there. Because I have a, uh, a, uh, a buck converter to regulate my voltage, right? And I'm going to just sort of slide that down in there. <laughs> uh, so anyways, God, what is wrong with my dog? Okay. So I need to extend all these wires. The, the way I like to do that is I, is I fan out all the wires like this. And then I match it over here. Sort of. That's not very well matched. Okay. So I'm just going to wedge them in there like that. I'm going to try to fold the ones that are supposed to come down, down. And these others can go up. And I'm going to pinch it. And I'm going to twist it. I'm just sort of smushing everything together, twisting it. Ooh, that's an ugly one. Yep, every time I film. I make the ugliest little connections. But whatever, there's a lot of solder there, right? I mean, a lot of uh, connection there. And then I'm going to take some flux. Ooh, that's a fluxy mess. Too much flux. I got my little, this isn't even a soldering iron. This is a wood burning uh, <laughs> tool. But it works let's see is it hot enough yet i'm just gonna get a good blob right on top oops lost my blob i'm just gonna put a little bit of a blob on there i'm gonna just let it work its way in get a little bit more okay well, that's a good enough of a connection for me now I have a uh, heat shrink. I wonder if I can squeeze a tiny piece of heat shrink over that disgusting connection I've made. I'm going to give it a shot. Cram that over. Melt it on. So I'm going to do that the rest of the way down. So there's the negative. Here's all my negatives. And they'll just uh, come out this direction. Now for the positive. Yeah, but I just need to get these extended so I have uh, something to work with. Get out the old wood burner. Glob on just a, just a bit. And oop, lost it all. Hell yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So the next thing I'm going to do is sort of work on a strain relief. So I'm just using more heat shrink for this. Uh, I don't know why I like heat shrink so much. You know, electrical tape for this part would be a-okay. Alright, so what we have is we have the positives and we've got the negatives. They're all sort of connected. I'm going to push another piece of heat shrink way down low. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. My connector, I guess it's only going to be as long as my uh, shortest piece. So, let's just cut all these off at the same. Oh, oh come on, man. Really? Really? 
Oops. Oh, fuck. Shorted shit out. <laughs> okay. One of the BMSs is asleep now. I have to shorten that out. Um, let's just start stripping all these. And twist them up. Yeah. Twist it real tight. Real, real tight. Oh, goodness. Fit. Not yet. I'm going to try putting a little bit of solder on the bottom. Because this is like, this is too much wire for XT60 connector. Uh, but I, I, I would love it if I could just get this to fit in there. <laughs> I did it with the last one. So we'll see. Okay, so everything's stuck together there. I need to uh, get out my bigger iron if I'm going to actually get this to solder into here. Uh, so I have a, uh, where's the handle? I don't even see it. It says 150 watt uh, iron, old school. It makes enough heat that I can liquefy everything and get it to melt in place. So let me start warming that one up. All right, so every time I solder something, it... It's like a total cluster F, and uh, <laughs> at least when it's on film, I look like an idiot every time. So I'm going to show you what it looks like being an idiot. Um, so this is way too big for here. It'll go in a little bit. I'm going to... I'm just going to try to get it in a ways. I'm going to just put a little bit of solder on my iron real quick maybe a drop that will stay if I'm lucky so I got my big iron can we see this Oop, most of it fell oh my god everything's falling so I, I mostly, you know, it's on there. Uh, that little drop there is kind of big. Let me see if I can melt that off. Probably, probably can't really. Let's see. Melt that down just a little. Yeah, it's slightly different. Okay. So that's uh, hot as snot. You know what? It's a good idea to have more place to dissipate heat so you don't ruin these things let me just put on another connector uh, a little bit warm I should be able to get my heat shrink up and over so the heat this shrink, heat shrink is a little bit big for getting really down in there so I want it to to go into the little recesses of the XT60 right so I'm just going to melt it just a little bit. Make it smaller. Let me twist it around. Make it smaller on this side. Then I'm going to cram it, cram it, cram it. Then uh, poke at it, get it in there. Come on. Yeah, it looks like it's in there. Now I'll finish shrinking it. There we go. There's one connection made. <laughs> so I can't use this for the 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 uh, whatever I'm trying to do here. Absorb some of the heat since these are open. Let me find a different connector real quick. All right. So here's a mill in that I'm less likely to short out. We're just gonna jab it on there to, to help hold everything in place okay let's go for it we got this one here crammed in as far as it'll go let's see hmm maybe feels pretty good kind of my wires kind of separated as I tried to cram it in. I think that'll work. I'll let it cool off a bit so I can get this heat shrink over before it shrinks. 
All right, so both these should be hot. Where's my multimeter? 15.88, very nice. So let's go ahead and take this top part off so we don't, uh, you know, accidentally short it out because that's the easy thing to short out. One more thing about these XT60s. The female end looks like that and the male end looks like this. So even though this slides into that, the male end is the, the two exposed bits that could short out real easy. The female end is the two protected bits that's very hard to short out. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with uh, masking tape and I'll get back with you in a, in a bit. All right, so just like the other pack, I'm gonna wrap this up tight and get it mounted flush. I'm gonna use the electrical tape for this one just because no, no real reason. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go for just tons and tons of tape. So I'm gonna work that down in there. That'll be my first run right there. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna get it on this side here. The top of it this time. <laughs> that is a ton of tape. Whatever. Let's do one more pass on the other side now. <laughs> I don't care. Ooh. The majestic sound. The, the song dog. Have you ever heard a song dog before? Alright, cool. So whatever. I'm happy with that. There's quite a bit of strain relief. Now for the boxing tape. Alright, so I've transferred all my markings, <laughs> all the relevant data, uh, to this battery so I know what it is because you never know could forget something so I'm gonna tape it up with uh, this boxing tape see how clear this stuff is I mean I just like it because you can see through it you know so the problem with paper tape is it'll burn plastic tape will melt uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal we'll just Go for it. I'm going to overlap this a bit. Plan to do a little relief cut. So I'm going to do the corners first. So this corner will go down like that. This corner go down like that. And then we'll flop this over. Trying to get it, kind of, get some work some of the bubbles out, I guess. <laughs> and wrap it around this way. I'm going to do that to all four corners, and then I'm going to just wrap the whole thing up in, in the, the boxing tape. Well, i got my four corners wrapped, and I'm going to wrap it this way, and then I'll go that way, and I'll call it good enough. Come on, scissors. Why don't my scissors work when I do them stupid? Okay. I'm going to try to wrap it around this, too. Uh, we'll see how, how well that works. I'm going to start. Okay, cool. So I have two fairly stable battery packs now that are built in mirror images of themselves so I can hopefully... Uh, do a thing <laughs> okay okay so here's the challenge this little six dollar ammo box is pretty small and i'm trying to put a lot of battery into it so the batteries pretty much fill it up right so like there's the battery pack right but i also want to have room for this uh buck converter so i can so I can bring the voltage down to what the power supply puts out on my CPAP. And it's going to be a tight fit. So in, in the roof here, there's, there's these little cutouts, right? And then maybe it'll, it'll fit. Let's see. 
I say that. Oh my god. Let me let me push those down and just cram this right here. We'll see how that goes. Oh, barely. Okay. So there's a little bit of. So it'll be one of those things. Everything will have its place and it'll just barely fit. And then on the outside, I think I need a, a switch on off. And then I'm going to mount my uh, cigarette lighter ports somewhere. The rationale behind having two packs is, you know, it's easy enough to do. And also, like, I live in Texas. We've had power blackouts. Uh, my mom uses a CPAP and I use a CPAP. So I was thinking if the power goes out, I could just take one of these packs and a, another buck converter and I could pass it on so she could run her CPAP. And, uh, and if not, I have a massive, how many amps did I say this was? 26.4? Yeah, man. So I have, what's that, a 32.8? No, I'm stupid. 26, 52.8, uh, amp hours to uh to run mine on for i don't even know how long that's gonna last all righty so i'm gonna work on my uh, parallel cable uh i salvaged all the wire that i've used in my battery projects recently you know uh what i was working with for the actual battery pack was wire that came out of oh my god these cable cutters suck was was wire that came out of a computer power supply, and uh, this was a plug off of uh, some trash I found. That's 12 gauge. I wonder if that's too big. I think I can squeeze two 12s in here. <laughs> okay, we'll try it. Um, so I'm just gonna cut this little length in half. Might be easier said than done with these wire cutters I'm using. Okay, so for the single strand, I've really found it useful to uh, just braise these a little bit. So here's my flux. I'll just put a little bit of that on there. Got some lead-free solder. We'll see how that works. Uh, and then I need, okay, the mail end which looks like this. Let's find the positive. Okay. And we'll cram that little puppy in there. Okay. Ooh. So then, there's one connection. Oh, that's a huge glob. Maybe I'll go back to my other solder. I liked it a little bit better. I really need to get a sponge so I can cool this big, big sucker off. All right, so here's some different solder I was using. Uh -uh. I don't know what this is. That's probably lead-free too. Oop. Can I pick that up? Oh, my iron's so hot. I'm going to pick that up. I can't pick it up. I used to could. <laughs> okay. Okay. I gotta cool this iron off. Okay. So here's a sopping wet. Uh, ugh. <laughs> this is a shop towel. It's a lot of water on it. Man, this thing is... I'm gonna cool it off drastically. God, it's just, you know, it gets so hot so fast and I don't use it quick enough. It gets all grungy. Fuck me. Every time you try to film, people talking, dogs barking. Holy crap. Let's just see if we can do a quick little clean up. Okay, whatever. Now, is that still hot enough to melt stuff? Hell yeah, it's holding a drop. Very good. 
we were working on the negative come on oh yeah there we go that's a good one okay that's what I want to see see how that just totally melted in there problem is I got a big blob on the back of it to do deal with but let me try resoldering this side a little bit put a little bit less on this um, yes melt it blah 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 nice okay positive is perfect negative is a bit too much lead I'm gonna nip that off we'll get to that later so again I'm using a what, 150 watt <laughs> soldering iron to do these connectors when, when I use the uh, the 35 watt iron it uh it doesn't have enough heat to melt the solder before it starts melting the housing so that's why I'm going through the the hassle here it just it just works better for me I, you know maybe I need to get a soldering iron that's younger than I am or something I, I don't know Okay, so let's just finish up this heat shrink real quick. We got uh, my last piece I need to do. So, I don't know why I insist on, you know, color coding my heat shrink, but I am. You know, I bought a, a box of black heat shrink and a roll of red heat shrink from the Harbor Freight, right? But it doesn't quite fit. It's a little too big to go inside these notches. I know I've already explained it in this video, but I'm just going to... Do it one more time. Shrink it down a little bit on that side. Shrink it down a little bit this side so I can twist it and fit it in. And I'm holding it in place with my fingers while I shrink it down small enough it won't slide around on me. I have the two connectors for the battery and now I'm going to try to cram these two 12 gauge wires into this uh, XT60. I've done it before. It's not easy, but we're going to do it. Oh my God, it's not going to fit. Okay. Okay, this is too much wire for for this connector. Gosh. Now it's my dog being a butthead. I'm going to twist him up a little crooked. So skinny on the tip. Look at that. Okay. Need heat shrink. Let's Get a little solder in here. Let's just try it one more time. We're just going to let the solder work its way up the copper because it wants to be. Nope. We're not. Because it doesn't work that way. The world doesn't work how I think it should. So then we're like, we're just going to solder this thing to the edge of it. Okay, let's just see if we can solder this to the outside of this thing. Whatever. Let me put a little more flux. I don't know what I'm doing. Jeez Louise. Okay, that wasn't enough. Ooh, I got it hot as hell though. Okay. I'm going to try one more time. Oops, I can't even reach it. Oh my. Don't lose all your solder on the outside. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, we're connected somehow. Okay. <laughs> you see this? That massive piece of heat shrink. <laughs> it fit inside, so I guess that's going to work. Hope that connection's okay. Uh, it's going to take a lot of shrinking. I wonder if I should get the heat gun out to make this work. Now, this is good enough. Okay, so there's that. So on the negative side, I'm going to try a little harder to have a little bit more difference in <coughs> length of my cable ends. See if I can make this work. So I'm going to twist from the bottom and then twist the top separately up high. Uh, that thing's still hot. 
I'll unplug it for a bit. Gotta have your flux. So I'm gonna make sure the bottom soldered together. Okay, so I might have done something. Okay. Yes, that is connected. Very nice. I don't remember if I flex this, so let's just go ahead and flex it. Oh, and the heat shrank. We're gonna go for this big bad boy again. Uh I'm slide it on. There we go. So now we have a wire that will actually kind of go down in there a ways. That's good. Okay. Very nice solid connection on my negative. So uh try to do it like better than I did my my positive, okay? It's looking good. Wasn't easy. But I made a parallel connector with some giant freaking 12 gauge wire into an XT60. Uh, neat. So there's my parallel. Let's just make sure everything's good. Negative, positive, positive, positive. Yep, didn't do any stupid mistakes. The next thing is I'm going to have the wires that go. So I'm going to parallel my batteries together. And then I'm going to connect them to my uh, buck converter via a fuse block. Oh wait, I also have a switch I want to use. So I'm going to solder this connection. Not going to bother crimping things. So I'm just going to take off the little insulation off of my little eyelet here. Let me strip a little more off of that. We're just going to do the same procedure, alright? I'm going to get some flux. I'm going to sort of put a little bit of solder on it. I'm going to take the solder. I'm going to stick it into the positive end. Oops. I need some flex on this thing. Ah, yeah. Let's get a little more on it. Who cares? Okay. So then I'm going to get a little ball on there. I'm going to solder my connection. Blah, 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 blah. It's bubbling. It's boiling. All right. It shot out a little ball of fuss. Oh, and the, wouldn't you know, I forgot to put the heat shrink on it. I was so excited. Look at that. I went on a real roll just then, and I forgot the heat shrink. Okay. Of course. Let's see if we can do better on this other side. Then we'll fix this one. So I got some heat shrink. That's going on first. <laughs> oh my god, I am a mess. That fluxed. Slide that on. Everything is golden. Ball of solder on it. Let's see if I can just suck it down in there like this. That might work. Yeah, come on, you know you want that solder. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Like that. Oh, we we're on such a roll. Totally screwed the pooch on this one. Come on. Alright, it's liquid. It's liquid. Pull it apart. Oh, God. <laughs> right on the feet. Excellent. Cool. Okay. We can recover from this. Heat shrink on the tube now. Very good. So now we have this connection full of solder. This thing too big to go in. What if I can liquefy it? Come on, man. Whatever. Damn. Okay, well, I got a very positive connection. <laughs> but look at this at the bottom. How am I going to get heat shrink inside that? Dang it. Okay, here's the deal. You got to know when you've been beat. I'm trying to reuse this connector after I soldered it once. There's big globs of lead. Not going to work. So let me just cut a new part. Oh my gosh. 
me finish cutting the lead off and I'll cut a new part I got the heat shrink on it I'm gonna twist it up nice and tight oh nope fucked up my twist <laughs> made a big lump I'm gonna twist it fairly solid so okay make sure I've got the right connector here we're gonna go to the positive side okay okay see if I can do this without screwing it up a little bit of flux clean the tip of the soldering iron let it roll around dangerously <laughs> beg it to take some lead Raise the tip of that a little bit until it's too big to fit in here. Yep, just like that. And then you want to cut it off again with your <laughs> with your terrible dikes. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay, whatever, whatever. We still got a little bit of wire left on this connector. <laughs> Okay, we'll just go with it. There'll be a little bit of copper down in there, so put a little flux on it. Maybe a little more. Why not? Let's see if we can't screw up a few more times. Come on. Get a little bit of that. Now we're going to try from the... Yes, the bottom up. Look at that. That'll fit. Fits right in there. We'll, uh... Always maintain your fingers in, in a very dangerous location. We're going to lose that drop because the iron's too hot, so cool the iron off again. Try to get a little bit of lead on it. <laughs> lose all that lead. Okay. And lose all that lead, so <laughs> cool the iron a bit more. Getting it very clean. <laughs> Alright, this is the ultimate shit show okay okay oh, I gotta drop I gotta drop I'm just gonna mount that drop right there whoops okay and I do believe we are connected finally jeez Louise why do I suck at that so much oops then you push your heat shrink on before it cools so it shrinks before you can get it in where you want it. And then you just barely get it get it acceptable. Okay. Here we go. And as easy as that. <laughs> You've soldered a connection. Let's go ahead and connect this before we like melt some stuff. So now I need to find a negative cable okay here's some more cable that I've salvaged from something uh, I just want the black one this is another nice copper cable I think some of it I was using was aluminum I think this might actually be a 10 gauge okay it's a 10 gauge that I just stripped down as a 12 gauge okay Twist, dip, <laughs> and pray. Okay. Twist, dip, pray, repeat. So I'm going to leave this one long. I'm going to cut it to length later. Oh, yes, right. Onto the insulation. Okay. There we go. We got a good looking, we've got another good looking one. Every fifth or tenth solder looks looks nice that's a good track record I'm gonna try to cram it on hot again uh, and we'll melt it on very nice okay whoa do you see some sparks coming off my solder iron what is going on there oh oh my god is the whole thing electrified 
They're going to electrocute me if I touch it. Okay, let's get that puppy unplugged. Woo! Okay, well, I'm going to call it quits tonight because that was too much of an adventure. Uh, <laughs> Next time on Benjamin Hutash ruining everything he touches. Actually, you know, what, yeah. no, that's not true. This is going to be one video. We're going to put the switch. I'm going to. I guess I'm switching the positive, and we're going to put this thing together. Okay, hopefully the hard part is done. Okay, so actually while we're here, <clears throat> I want to balance these batteries a little bit as my next step. And uh, I'm going to charge them up a bit more. And since it's my night time, but not the end of the video, we're going to see what we got here. So, so this pack is 15... 0.87 and this pack is 15.81 so there's a little bit of a difference in charge uh, but I'm just going to see if we can balance these two through this puppy so let's once there's going to be a spark oops okay oh no Let's see. Can we can get a little spark. No, no spark. What has that done to this end? Oh, it split the difference, of course. Oh my god, tangled. We're now oh tangled again. <laughs> We're now at 15.84. I'm gonna see about charging this thing up. Just back to 16, I guess. So, if I turn this on, it's been, okay, so let's, let's turn the amps all the way down, up just enough that we get voltage, and then we're going to set the voltage, can you see my numbers? We're setting the voltage to... 16 point one uh, leads not long enough so we should be able to put that on and then we can crank okay let's let it do a thing yeah little baby Ooh. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm going to 16.1 uh, volts now. That I'm just going to charge it up to that point. Because you can charge it up to 16.8, but I'm trying to undercharge it so it lasts a long time. Uh, yep. Alright, I got a switch. It's a 20 amp switch I bought from the auto parts store. I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to figure out a way of insulating these and get get these connected, maybe some heat shrink over it, and then I'll get that installed. I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink. It's a pretty big piece. Just uh, slide that on. Okay, so with the heat shrink on, connect this right here. Get that nice and tight. <laughs> hold this up. I'm gonna start shrinking it. That's an okay amount of insulation. I'm hot. hot stuff. I'm happy with that. Okay so this end will be the lead that goes to the buck converter. I've left it super long so I can cut it to fit. Okay so now I have a XT60 plug go into a fuse, go into a switch. So we can be fairly confident that this thing uh, is turned off and protected. All right, so I need to figure out where I'm gonna mount this stuff. You know, there's almost 
no room on the inside for for anything else right the batteries and the butt converter take up almost all the space so what I'm thinking is on this back corner uh, way back here I can put my switch this is what I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna mount this down here on the bottom and uh, that should give me oh yeah that'll, that'll give me plenty of room or I'll be able to you know use this thing cool okay using a, a drill gauge you know I can see that the, uh, the size I need is a 13 30 second and uh, that's what I'm going to use I'm just going to mount it right here so oh gosh I hope it fits <laughs> will that fit hell yeah it fits okay so we have a switch so I think I'm going to use rivets so the same thing with the rivets you know I'm going to use a 7 64th drill bit and see how that goes if I can find one I broke almost all my small drill bits but we'll see what I can find so I didn't quite find the uh, the the size I was looking for Th this drill bit is labeled a 1 8 but it fits in the 7 64th hole I'm gonna drill and drill this thing and then I put the rivet through the holes ooh I have just enough space for one washer on the inside that'll help make it strong okay okay that is excellent can you see that we're gonna have washers inside the rivets there I mean, I'm gonna hold the washer with one hand I'm gonna try to squeeze this with the other push it down tight squeeze and one more oh wow that got real tight on that plastic uh, Okay, it didn't break the thing though, so I'll roll with it. Come on. Goodness. Okay. Oh, the washer fell off that side. Whatever. See how one of my washers slid off? Oh well. I tried. It's in there. Alright, so just to recap. The battery will plug in here. And they'll go through the fuse, through the switch, to these wires here that will go to the input to the butt converter. And then on the output of the butt converter, that's where the plug will come from. And then I can dial in the voltage to the 12 volts that the, you know, that I want to regulate it to for my CPAP. But you could regulate it for uh, other reasons, of course. I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of wiggle room with these wires right there then I'm going to extend the length of these and then cut these to fit and then we can assemble this thing come on yes yes accept the lid okay so the heat shrink is on now I just need to figure out where I want these wires to run mm, right here whoa quick I'm gonna just feed these puppies right in. When the batteries go in, it connects to the switch. Do I have a fuse in here yet? Yeah, no fuse, so that's whatever. And that can get crammed down just like that. The input and we'll have the output oh wow we are getting close okay so how's this thing gonna work for me oh god i'm gonna break it <laughs> it's a little tight um i need a tiny screwdriver let's well, see this is the butt converter uh you got it's labeled uh 
input, you know, positive, negative. And then on the other side, you got the output positive, negative, but you have this little pot right here, which will control the voltage. And uh, I think you need to put a load on it, but we'll figure that out in a second. I mean, yeah. Ooh, should I peel it? Or I could leave it. It's not hurting anything. Oops, now it won't stay. Okay, we're peeling it. Whatever. Ooh. Okay, so there is not a whole lot of space in here. You know, uh, and I guess these terminals, we're going to have to keep them from shorting out. So I'm just going to cut the wires kind of short, cram them in there, and have enough insulation that I can kind of wiggle it down in there. Oh, I get it secured. Okay. So that's the input. Cool. Now for the output, I guess I want about that much wire. Oops, I guess you can't see anything I'm doing here. Sorry. So I guess in theory we're ready for a test. Ooh, nerve-wracking. Okay, so let's just give this a test. I'm going to put in a 10 amp fuse. Uh, you know, just to be on the safe side, this buck converter is rated for 10 amp continuous. And I, I couldn't imagine needing more than that. So there is the fuse. Now, in order to test this thing, I've heard that it helps to put it under load. And I'm just going to try very, see if it comes on real quick. Okay, that thing comes on. I'm just going to try charging the phone as my load. And then in this other port, uh, I'm going to get out the, the voltmeter. I'm going to very carefully try not to short this out. So I'm going to the center contact. So it says it's at 12 volts. Uh, Cool. I mean, is that... Twelve volts. Okay, so what happens if I... Twist this thing. Okay, that makes it go down. That makes it go up. Okay, so it was set to twelve volts. Okay. I'm gonna go to like... Twelve point one volts. I'll try that. Okay. Neat. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. By 12 volt buck converter, sometimes they might come set at the voltage you're looking for. Let the settings stay where they are. I'm gonna poke these wires down a bit. Oh, neato. Okay. Okay, 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 uh, that all close. Wow. Okay, it, it, it might be ready for a real test. Okay, uh, I'm set up to do it. A test. So this will be with the humidifier on to see if it can handle the load. So I have the wire going from the plug to the CPAP and the CPAP is power getting power. Very good. Uh, let me just flip this on real quick. Okay. Okay. 
Well, it sure does seem to work. Alright, I'm going to run it for a minute. <laughs> See how it does. We are at... It's about 120 on my clock, so... We'll just do like 10 or something. Oh my god. I fell asleep. <laughs> uh... Uh, half an hour on the thing. Um, let's see where we're at. So this buck converter is kind of hot. It's not scary hot. It's just like it's warm to the touch. Pulling, uh, pulling however many amps this thing draws. I think it might be kind of a big issue. We'll have to see if the temperature is different. What's this? See, this is uh, rated for 12 volts at 16.67 amps. So, I don't know how many amps I was drawing. Maybe six? Maybe it's the full thing? Yeah, I, I have no idea. But maybe maybe this 10 amp buck converter isn't the right, the right choice for uh, running the humidifier portion of this. But, you know, uh, that was... That was an excellent test. Uh, that, that, I mean, the, the, the hose is hot. Uh, the humidifier plate is hot. It, it, uh, th these batteries, these batteries can handle it. And you know, this buck converter can handle it, I guess. But tonight, I'm going to sleep uh, no humidity, no heat. Just this is CPAP. And see if it'll last the whole night. And if it does, I'm going to edit this video and post it. So cool. Oh, nice little nap after a kind of a hot weather. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Uh, I am so sorry for how long this video is. But it's just, it's going to be an insanely long video. I just want to recap just a few things to extend the time even further. But these batteries, uh, I think they're awesome. You know, I used this thing for two nights uh, and I lost, uh, you know, less than half of a volt, you know, because I didn't charge it as much as I wanted and the battery settles because I didn't fully charge it. So we're talking, we lost like, you know, uh, maybe 0.3 to 0.4 volts over two nights of using it with uh, no heat or humidity, just just the uh the CPAP and uh, and that's excellent so I, I would go for it that's cool now uh this buck converter I bought I bought it from eBay and it's this DC to DC uh you know 8 to 60 volt to 1 to 36 volt 15 amp 200 watt synchronous buck converter step down power module uh and you know even in its little data sheet here it's it claims that it's a uh, it can do, you know, 10 amps to 15 amp max. Um, just because it got hot when I was using the the heat and humidity, I don't I don't believe it. I I, th I think you know this this little ten dollar thing is is completely acceptable for uh, uh you know what it is, right? It's 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 it works. It regulates the voltage, but you, I don't think you can trust what the uh uh the amp rating of these things are you know uh that, that's this is a little more heat than i think it should produce but anyways thank you so much for watching this video i'm going to put time codes in this and you know the uh, the chapters the, the time stamps whatever you want to call it just to help you know everyone navigate it uh it's this is this bonkers bananas insane long video i've never made a video this long in my life again thank you so much uh if you liked it thumbs it up that would help me out a bit and uh uh if you're into this sort of stuff i don't always do batteries i do a lot of lawnmower repair but uh if you enjoyed this content at all which i'd be shocked if you did honestly uh subscribe i would uh you know appreciate that so anyways uh thank you so much and uh, build your battery backups before the grid collapses again.